Here we go. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm James Wesley. I am Seth Rudetsky, and together we are... Married? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know Whatever. what that means. I don't know. I thought we'd have a fun... <laughs> Uh, the point is, this is Stars in the House. Um, Stars in the House is a show that we do twice a day. Yes. For um, the Actors Fund. Yeah, for the Actors Fund. I'm basically to put people in a good mood. But also, yes. if you can, we'd like you to donate to the Actors Fund. And we have a brand new thing we're going to be doing tonight. So start donating. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Seth. Well, I guess I can tell. Well, I'm yeah. going to wait till we get a little bit in. Oh, a little bit in. Well, Let's okay. first see what the Actors Fund is. The Actors Fund is an organization that helps people, especially at this time in our country's history, in the world's history, helping professionals in the performing arts from coast to coast, everywhere in between. If you're someone who depends on the performing arts, whether you're a wedding singer or a dance teacher, or you work in an opera, you work in an artistic director's office, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, and you need help paying your rent, uh, buying some food, paying an insurance premium, the Actors Fund is there to help you. And that's why we're here. Correct the mundo. Right. So I just added- Oh, put the banner on, Seth. So. Okay, well, I just added this little thing. Oh, what did you It's put? such a busy banner. But here's oh the thing. Gosh. Well, just that way people know. Well, so here's the deal. We're going to ask again. Right. So donate at starsinthehouse.com. We have a new method where we're going to have people read who donated. So once you donate at starsinthehouse.com, you're going to get something back from the Actors Fund being like, thanks for donating $20. Forward that thanks to Stars in the House 2020 at Gmail. And then we're going to get them. And then we're going to have someone from China Beach read them in their in their character. I don't know how that's making any difference. But it's going to be This isn't frozen, Seth. So. Yes, it is. Dana Delaney is going to use your character voice. <laughs> A speaking voice, uh, if that's you like. Um, oh my so gosh! Okay. So this is a dedication to Chinese. So here's the deal. This is basically like me with SCTV. When I did SCTV, this is true. I was in a what full Seth panic. What about to say? Because I'm obsessed with SCTV. Panicking, sweating, so excited. A and, and, and because he, Seth talks really fast. SCTV. Yes. SCTV. Just... Second City Television. I was right. freaking out because I love the show so much. So now I've transferred all that nervous energy and excitement and craziness and sweatiness. And Red Chestnut to, to James Wesley. He's obsessed with China Why? Beach. Because I've seen, you know what I realized? Because I because Dana Delaney, yes, Emmy Award winner for China Beach, not once but twice. We're aware of her work. Um, <laughs> so we were talking a little bit before, and I was like, I'm so nervous. Look at my chest. It's like red. And why is that? Well, one, I'm a fan of the show, but I've been fans of other shows, including Desperate Housewives. But you're a psycho fan of the show. Well, but you know what I think it is? I think it's because this show came on the air when I was 19 years old, the same age as Julie. And that's such a formative age, you know, and and Dana's character was all about, you know, she was a nurse in a in in a in a world that was really dominated by men, which is one of the reasons I love the show, is that it's it may be the first show that was dealt with war that came from a women's perspective. And being gay, though not being out yet, I think I related more. You know what I mean? And about to embark on my life that I didn't know what it would be at this point at that point. And China Beach was like the show that I watched and I followed and fell in love with all the characters for all four years it was on the air. So I told Dana, I said, I may not be able to do anything and she may have to take over the entire yeah. show. Here's and I'll just notes. sit here it's and like this. I love them going, remember the time you, and, and then that's like it. This. Hey, by the way, we already got an email. People are doing it. So you donated, oh, excellent. You donated stars right. in the we are, house. We are here for Actors right. Fund, not just for my own enjoyment. Yeah, so selfish. <laughs> stars in the house.com. And then you email stars in the house 2020 at gmail.com, the donation slip. And like I said, and, Danny Delaney in full character costume. Seth, will you, be okay. donations. you know what? Here's the thing because Seth did not see the show. The first, I'm going to add him right now, but that's okay. He was just, you just graduated what from like Oberlin, grad, like Nancy. Yes. Oberlin grad. Yes. Hey, Nance. Exactly. We'll talk about um, that later. Desk him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, I believe that it's available like on Hulu or Amazon or something. And we're going to watch it. I'm going to watch it all over again. And I'm going to, you're going to see how, how easy it was for me to get hooked on the show. In the meantime, we want to give a shout out to some people who gave earlier today to the Actors Fund because we think like the average donation is like $35 is what we're kind of guesstimating here. It's really incredible. We keep saying it in these times that people donate it's really to the incredible. Actors Fund. It's incredible. So we want to give a shout out to just a few people. Lisa from California who donated $50. Jessica from California, $25. Michelle from Illinois, $50. Mark from New Hampshire, $25. I don't think we've had someone that I've read out loud, New Hampshire. That's Mark from New Hampshire, $25. Merle from New Jersey, $50. Linda from Pennsylvania, $50. Annette from California, $100. DV from Alabama, $100. Wow. And Duffy from New York, $100. And that adds up in our five weeks to 
$238,500 raised for the Actors Fund. So yeah. Thank you very much. Thank everyone. you, everyone. We're seeing applause from Michael. Um, okay, so we're going to have China Beach. We're going to have a special John LaPook segment. But don't forget, if you donate startsandhouse.com, email startsandhouse2020, gmail.com. Okay, James, let the obsession begin. Okay, so because of our platform, everyone who knows this, Stream, StreamYard is great, but there is a limit to how many people you can have on the screen. So as much as everyone calls it Zoom, it isn't Zoom. Zoom, you have like 100 people. But it's not live stream. You but can't you live, can't stream, live Zoom. stream Zoom. Believe me, if we did, we just got uh -oh. a notification saying the studio is full. Uh, Lapook, you might have to go out and come back in. Yeah, Lapook. At, 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 at 820. There you go. There he See, goes. John Lapook has been with us so much. He, he knows directions. the drill. He just follows the directions. So we're going to do this piecemeal. And I just kind of did this randomly. So we're going to have four people. Seth, are you going to... We Because there were, I think I think I did my research, 300 different songs that were used over the course of four years. That like we, the original we could be, recordings. That we could be sued for playing. Yeah, yeah. so so the the title song is so iconic and so set the tone for it there's the show would be cut off if we actually played the supremes so seth instead is going to do his his uh, very best at kind of imitating what the opening was it sounds horrible on piano <laughs> but just like go, go along with the game go along with it those of go. you who are fans and so hold on we're going to start here seth go ahead you go ahead you just get started here So with that in mind, we're gonna get on Dana Delaney. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and Jeff. Hi. Oh my gosh. There we go. <laughs> I can see you. I actually think that Brian was trying to get on, oh. and and Dr. Lapook took his spot. Not cool. <laughs> so hopefully Brian will get on now. Uh, um, so when he comes on, we'll um, we'll get started, Dana, and then I'm sure that Brian will be on shortly. Um, right, right. Thanks, Dana, for making this happen. Sure. sure. I do want to say um, because you were talking about the music rights, yeah. the reason why it wasn't available for a long time was because nobody knew that it, you know. DVDs would be around that you would have to pay in perpetuity and all that sort of thing. So you can only watch the show by buying the DVD set at this point that Time Life owns. Oh, it's a little retro because they paid for all the music rights, which oh. cost them a lot of money. Yeah. So you can't see it streaming right now. You'd have to get the DVD. No, you have to buy the full set from Amazon. It's okay. a little backed up right now. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's not exactly essential. Uh <laughs> buying but it yeah. may be pretty soon the way that we're like self quarantine <laughs> here so we'll go um dana i already told you how much i love the show so i may may need you to introduce me to two of your uh and everyone else two of your co-stars here okay jeff cober right there who um what was your character's name jeff dodger what would you want to say about him well he didn't really talk much so I. that's I true <laughs> He was the silent type. He was, he was the man. He's the man who had seen too much. Yes, that's right. The, the thousand yard stare. And then we yeah. have Michael Boatman, who played Beckett, who was the head of Graves, who was, which was the uh, the morgue. Oh, Michael. Uh oh. Michael. Take your. Is he muted? No, we didn't mute him. We would never mu mute Michael. And I'm not. And I'm. There not we go. Muted. There you are. You got it, Michael. My mic was working. I did it. Okay. Yeah, you did it. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hi thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> I love. I love you both. I love. And, you. I love James, and I love James and Seth because you're helping actors. What a wonderful thing! Oh, and, um, right. I mean, that sounded actor. awesome on the piano, by the way. <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> yeah, Audra, Audra's going to get the good fight going at some point soon if, oh. if Emily James doesn't kill her first. Having a baby running around, but uh, that'll be another day. But okay. um, Michael, I'll, I'll start with you simply because Dana um, reminded me that this was like early, early on in your career. How was this like your first TV show? Yeah, it was. I was uh, 22 or 23, I think, uh, when I got that show. <laughs> what did you think? And now I'm 55. How did that happen? <laughs> How does that even happen? It, it doesn't seem possible. <laughs> And Delaney looks exactly the same, which right? is so. Uh, no. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, baby. 
<laughs> so, so how Dana? So uh, I know, but I can't see Dana if I don't if I don't wear oh, the glasses. Right. I got to see the cast. You know what I like. The glasses like. work. The glasses yeah. really work. Okay. Oh, thank you, Jeff. See. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Ass kisser. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uber fan. Uber fan. <laughs> so okay. So, no doubt that the the writing. Uh, amazing the everything about the show was great but i mean were you did you all of you have to go in an audition like how did it, how did it begin and what did you think when you yeah. read the script for the first time um i read the script and i thought i'd never read a part written for a woman like that it was like a man it was written and i i pictured when i went into audition i played it like clint eastwood would play it i just pictured clint eastwood I found out later that the writer John Sacred Young had pictured Henry Fonda, which is good too. You know, all American <laughs> stoic. But yes, I had I had a very now well known, long drawn out testing. A lot of people did not want me. Uh, it went on and on. Hey, wait, famously, details, details, details. What do you mean hold on, well a known? Picture. Hold on, there we go. Whoa. <laughs> Looking good. Um, but who didn't want you? Who the hell didn't want you? Uh, ABC, a few ABC executives did not want me because they didn't think I was pretty enough. <gasps> Yikes. And they made me do screen tests. And I can say it now because she's won an Oscar. Uh, it was between me and Helen Hunt in the end. Oh. Oh. And she's done just fine. <laughs> yeah, it worked out. And by the way, you look pretty sexy here. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> that was Rolling Stone. <laughs> wow. um, but yeah, and I have to say the ABC executive did write me an, a letter of apology uh, a couple wow. years later and said that he was wrong. So he didn't have to do that. So that was pretty big of him. Nice. Right. Yeah. What about you, Jeff and Michael? How was your experience getting on the show? My experience, I was uh, Jeff. I, I just... You want to go? No, I want you to go, Michael. <laughs> I'm a little delayed because I haven't heard this story. Um, I don't know that there's much of a story. I was living in New York in a basement apartment, you know, <laughs> doing the young um, struggling actor thing. And I got, uh, I was working as a security guard for New York Telephone, believe it or not. I don't even think New York Telephone even exists anymore. I mean, yeah. You know, none of the, uh, yes, yes, guarding New York Telephone buildings on the, on the midnight to eight shift so I could uh, audition during the day. Um, which to me was just one of the best ways to see New York because I got to see New York after dark, you know, which is uh, back in the 80s it was oh. know, quite a thing. It was, it was a, a wonderful, horrible, great, uh, amazing place especially for a young actor. But um, I've been auditioning around, and um, this is such a, I'm so, I feel like I'm the Wizard of Oz here. I'm like looming over the camera. Um, <laughs> I've been auditioning around, and I got a call from my agent that there was a show, a Vietnam War show, told from the perspective of, of women, which I thought was great. Yeah. And um, I read the script, and there's just special, there's just certain scripts that are just immediately special. You just know that something is going to happen, you know, and uh, this was one of them. I, and at that time, I didn't, I didn't, I certainly didn't have the confidence to think that I was going to get the part of Sam Beckett, who's, you know, my character that I played. But um, I just remember wanting to really do a good job and, and, and wanting to really just throw my energy at it as, as, as powerfully as I could. And so, you know, I went in and I auditioned, and I think I had like two callbacks before we had to do the whole like go to the network and go to the studio, and um, but that involved me flying out from New York like on a probably a Friday or something, testing um, at in front of ABC, and like getting the part like right there. John Levy, who was the casting director, ran out after me. I guess they decided right then and there. Oh. And I don't remember who was up for it, but I'm sure there were familiar, you know, faces because a lot of my friends, guys that I hung out with at the time and are still good friends like Don Cheadle and Courtney Vance, who I was in um, Hamburger Hill with before that, had also auditioned. I mean, like, you know, Jeff and Dana know you kind of, you know, you meet your friends and your enemies when you're auditioning and the ones that are able to kind of hang out. And when you get a part that they want, tend to be, I think, your best, your, not your best friends, but your real friends. Let me ask you something, Michael. Have you ever been up for a part that your friend wasn't up for and you actually called your friend and he said, it's been in for something and I think you'd actually be really right for it? 
No, um, I haven't, but I have been up for parts where friends were being considered, and when they got it, I was actually happy for them. I mean, I'm, I, 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 because, because I get it, it's harder for me if I see a, a part that, you know, which has actually happened where, you know, it was in some film that I auditioned for, and a famous rapper at the time, who will remain nameless, but um, a famous rapper at the time got the part, and it was, it was like, no, this is, no, no, it makes no sense. It's easier for me when it's a friend of mine, because I can, A, if I can't be happy for myself, I can at least right. be happy, because I know this really, you know, good actor, buddy of mine, you know, got the gig, so. That's nice. I don't know if that's crazy or not. Hey, Dana, before we get to Jeff, can you let Brian know that we have a spot for him? Because I have a feeling that he tried to get in. And oh, yeah. I just got a text from Brian. He's oh, on the go. road. He's trying to get uh, oh. somewhere where he can dial in. Oh, oh so Brian. Where is he? <laughs> okay. Is he in Utah? Oh, my God. He's, yeah, he's in Utah. Sometime in the next hour, he could just pop, he could just they, pop on. They have Wi Fi there. Uh, do they? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I know they do. Hey, Jeff. Yes. Um, Dana was telling me about a, a special trip that the two of you took together at the end of the first season. I'd, I'd love to hear it because I, I I mean, had had any of you been to Vietnam before? I mean, especially then. Probably not, right? Vietnam opened for uh, tourism in July of that year. I think it was 87, 80, 88. Um, mm -hmm. And we went, we were there, we were the first uh, Westerners that a lot of these people had ever seen. Wow. One of the first things that we had to learn to say wow. was, Com file and so to la May, which means I'm an American. I'm, I'm not a Russian, I'm an American. Wow. Because <laughs> the Russians had been there for 10 years and they, uh, they didn't tip well and they were rude. <laughs> and so people would look at us and then we would say that and they would go, oh, okay, and invite us in. Except one woman came up to me. Do you remember this, Dana? She said, why you eat people? I said, I'm sorry? She said, why you eat people? I said, I, I, I don't eat people. She said, you're American, aren't you? So there were still, most people said, uh, that's in the past. We want to move forward from here. Americans are our friends. But there were a few people still that, that everyone there had lost family members. Everyone, virtually yeah. everyone of a certain age. So. You know, it's wow. funny because I, you know, having watched the show when I was 19, it seemed like the Vietnam War was so much earlier. But now looking back, you had, you went there only like 14 years after the end. The show began only 13 years after the end of the war. Yeah. Really, like you said, Jeff, it wasn't wow. everyone yeah. knew people. Yeah, it was. There were still in Hue uh, where they had the the massive Tet offensive uh, battle, uh, the battle for Hue. There's still bullet holes everywhere i mean there was uh and and bomb craters and just yeah it was uh there was still yeah, lots of evidence do you remember we went to the orphanage and there were all those kids that were clearly had agent orange and they all had birth uh, defects and, and, well and they also were all almost all uh half american yeah and and mixed race in in vietnam means you're you you don't exist right yeah. they, back they, then they, I, I don't back, know that's back true. then yeah back yeah then, at that yeah. time yeah D dana why did you why did the two of you decide to go because we're adventurous <laughs> <laughs> i love it and there was a writer's strike oh and so, God, i forgot that yeah so the uh we weren't going to start up in july and oh. so we had time on our hands and but and, we had this great adventure because we ended up going being paired in a little private tour with this guy named Bill Stevenson, who it turned out was there to meet with spies, I guess. He was trying to get information about MIAs and he was writing a book about it. And um, it was called Kiss the Boys Goodbye. Is that what it was called? Or I think he wrote the book afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, we're in the book. But well, because oh, of this, no we were watched constantly. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 this is the best story. We were in in uh, Saigon, uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh City. <laughs> and by this time we had gotten to see the dirty underbelly of Vietnam uh, and and we saw the spies following us. And I went into my room one afternoon when I, I had sent in some laundry and hadn't come back. And I said, geez, how long does it take to get your laundry around here? 10 seconds later, the phone rang. You want laundry? I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, please. And I went and told Bill and Dana, and they said, "No, nah, that's a, that was a coincidence." So I sent out some more laundry right away. Next day, I went back and said, 
gosh, they really don't do laundry very fast around here. The phone rings. You want laundry? So, <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Jeff, you thought they were spies. They were actually made or deeds. <laughs> wanted to make sure we were taken care of. Wow. Wow. They were there to hook you up and you accused them of spying. I, you know what? I heard, I remember that story, but why did you, did you guys go before we shot the pilot or? No, after the first six episodes. No. Oh, that's right. Oh, my gosh. Because you why guys were a spring it? replacement, right? Is that what? Yeah. We, we, we were at half. We were yeah. mid season. Mid season. Mid season. Oh. Oh, mid-season replacement, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I was a guest star on the pilot. Oh, my God, you were so good. Bro. I wasn't even a regular. I never tested. You never did? Well, thank you. They did, Though they realized after they, they did the pilot, they said, you know what? We don't have any servicemen in this show, so <laughs> why don't we bring that guy back? So, I tell you guys that, that all these years yeah. later, all these years later, my wife is still obsessed with Jeff Cobra. She just thought you were the sexiest. Oh my God, those eyes, Myrna. that voice! Oh, Come boy. on, thank yeah. you. Yeah, great. No, no thank that you. That made my day. Uh, yeah. Hold on, let's Thanks be real life. For creating and oh look, <laughs> look oh, at see? that. Oh, the man of China boat. Beach. That's right, Boatman. You look like a baby. He was. We were all babies, for God's sake. You, none no, of, no, none I of you have were. <laughs> what? Okay, so if I was 23, we can all, it's all out. In the, how old were you then? I was 30, 30. 30. No. Yeah, I was old, man. I was I, 31. Yeah. I was 33, I think. 34, oh, right. something okay. like that. All right. All, yeah. right. all yeah. right. But I was a guy who was supposed to be 19, but it seemed too much. So yeah. the, the, the years the years helped. So it made sense. It made sense. Yeah. Hey, Dana. Can you mm -hmm. check your email? I sent you a list of donations to read. We, we oh my God, yes. Uh, Wimmer says he'll be there within 10 minutes. Uh -huh. where, is he, where is he going? Uh, he's, he's probably- I just see him tearing through the, 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 the- Yeah, exactly. I just see him tearing down some country road in, in Utah. I'm assuming he's in Utah. So everybody listening, when you donate the stars in the house, then you send your little donation sheet, to stars in the house 2020 at Gmail, and we can have a fabulous China Beach cast member like Dana Delaney. Marita. By the way, Dana, when, you, when you're on Zoom, you can make a fake background in back of you. Your house looks like the fake background on Zoom. <laughs> That's I know, right? It is fake. <laughs> oh, That's right. hysterical. Uh, okay, oh, are you way, ready? I, yes, yes, ready. Yeah. Yes, okay. Lexi from Kentucky, 3575. <laughs> Get that 75 cents in, excellent. Charlene from Clearwater, Florida, 25. Patrick from New Jersey, 51.50. Nancy from Georgia, 123.59. Amanda from Illinois, is this like a tip or something? I'll just round it up. 26. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie from LA, 26. Kira from New York City, 25. Nancy from Virginia, 52. Ruth, I know Ruth. Ruth from Canada, 100. Uh, Christina from Minnesota, 25. Julie from Indiana, 26. Who has been watching Stars in the House from the beginning. And, oh, thank you. She watched China Beach for the entire run. And uh, Abby. Uh, oh, Abby. I know Abby from Pittsburgh, $75 in honor of Dana Delaney. has been such an inspiration in my life. I have to tell you, Abby watched the show when she was, I believe, maybe 9 or 14. Maybe. 12, somewhere around there, 12. She wrote me a letter back then. I answered her, and we've been pen pals ever since. Oh, wow. She just came to see me. In a, she's come to see me in a play in New York. She just came to see me in a play in New Jersey in January. Aww. She's great. Wow. Well, thanks, so thanks, great. everyone. While we're waiting for Brian to find Wi Fi or pull over, why don't we bring on Nancy and we'll, yeah. we'll bring on Robert because we have enough room here. <laughs> Here we go, Nancy. Yay. Hi. 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 Hey. Nice. It's so great to see your faces. <laughs> you guys are so beautiful. <laughs> You're so beautiful. You I feel like every, are I feel so like, beautiful. I feel like everybody has everybody has figured out this uh, this multi meeting situation. I'd never heard of things like this until uh, you know until the virus. Until and now all of a sudden. It's here we are. It's just pretty amazing. <laughs> here we got some pictures here. Let's get the show here. Yeah, see if you remember these photos. 
Hold on. Wait, who am I echoing back? I think it might be Mike. Uh oh. So what do I do? I have earphones in. What if you I don't a- wear the What if you don't wear the earphones? Will it not echo? It's not echoing. Should I just turn it off? Yeah, maybe Probably. turn it off. Okay. We'll, we'll show. Wow, we'll look at that. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Nice yeah, round, Nancy. Nancy. Nancy's right. Yeah. I'll love it. Which one am I? Okay, I so I'm off. <laughs> oh, I can see it's Clint Eastwood. You were doing Clint Eastwood in that picture, Dana. I saw it. <laughs> Nancy, are you just like, listening to music this whole time and ignoring us? <laughs> No, actually, I was inspired by seeing that other people sent old photos. So I was scrolling through my phone. I oh. sent you a couple. Oh, you can so, send? Yeah, I did. I, I managed to get your emails, but I could. I think I got it to you, Dana, and Michael. And then you said, we're going to bring Nancy on. So I was like, oh, darn it. I'm going to check. I'll get the rest of you. Give me five minutes on Oberlin. First of all, <laughs> where did you live? I lived in uh, Burton for two years. Beautiful. And then I lived off campus. But if you, well, you were there after me because I graduated in 81. Yeah, I graduated late 80s. But I worked the Dascom lunch crowd Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and it was grim. I, when, you, I worked, when you say worked, what do you mean, Nancy? Well, Dascom was a big was a big cafeteria. Okay, Michael, that's really fun. <laughs> I dropped my side and showed them a bra strap. What do you Yeah, know? baby. I, uh, no I one wore bras at Oberlin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shade their armpits. <laughs> Those were the days. No, I served up food for lunch. I was like the lunch cafeteria line server. And once I keeled over and fainted. And for one day, the rumor on campus was, she's pregnant. Oh. And then that ended. Okay. Oh what was your actual major? Uh, creative writing major, black studies minor. Yes, queen. <laughs> no, yas, queen. Yeah, yeah, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Since I've got five of you, since I can't have all of you on, what was like a, oh. a, a typical week like? Did you like did you, have, did you have table readings? Where did you film? Because it all looks so real. Did we ever have a table reading? I don't remember one. No, we had no time. No. no. Oh. I don't remember. We did on, at lunch sometimes out at, uh, at Indian, Indian Dunes, Dunes. We would sit and yeah. read a I do times. remember vague something like that, like maybe one time or a couple of times having one at Indian Dunes. Yeah. We were famous for having the longest days in Can't show Bob. business. We had That's a right. Can't hear me? Bob. We can hear you. you, can, can you Michael's hear me? one having problems. Maybe put it back in, Michael. The I know. I know. There's it's always you, a troublemaker, and you're Michael. It's Michael, it's not Bob. It's, it's not me. You can hear me. Yeah, yeah, Bob, you're all right. Bob, you're perfect. Oh, per- I love to hear you. Hear that. me now? Bob, tell them yeah, about the Michael. t-shirt. Oh yes. Um, we did have a we had one 24 hour Bob's shooting talking. day. And I we and then they they couldn't even shoot the next day. And they the crew printed up a t-shirt. I'm not gonna mention the director's name, but it did say I survived, and then the director's name. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um yeah. We were legendary, actually. It took a while, let's say, to get the show on pattern, I think, as, as the studio executives are fond of saying. We, we, uh, it took, because of the, you know, shooting in Indian Dunes, the, because of weather issues, I mean, the set got washed away during the pilot. Wow. There were different things that didn't happen on a normal studio, you know, television series. So but it took a while. They also innovated a lot of moving camera uh, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, we were that, the first ones to use a steady cam. Before yeah. uh, ER, we did the yeah. same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ha ha. ER stands on our shoulders. That's what happens. That's true. That's actually true. <laughs> so, wait a minute. So, how much was done at Dunes? Like, how much was done on location? How much was done at Warner Brothers? Well, that changed uh, from season to season, right? I mean, because we did much more at the Dunes the first season than thereafter. Yeah. I think well, all the inter- most of the interior scenes were at Warner Brothers, right? Yeah. Yeah, right, I know you- all of all of the our, all of my scenes at the GRU were done um, at um, Warner Brothers. Was it Stage Nine? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but we, our our showrunner John Secret Young was famously a perfectionist, mm-hmm. so we really Ooh. never had over 18, 20 hour days. That's that was pretty much the whole. We we also oh, went through the color wheel on the scripts twice once. So oh my god! Twice in other words, script. every different color was a script change. Oh yeah. my god! I forgot about that. Yeah. When you said we went through the color wheel, Jeff, for a second I was thinking, well, Michael and me, but what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dare you. Oh, you always got to go there, Giles. I do. <laughs> 
They did. They, they, they brought Nancy in for that purpose, actually. It's true. <laughs> and you know what? What's funny is you guys were talking about your auditions, and I realized I auditioned during the writer's strike. So they didn't have a script. They couldn't legally bring a script. Oh. So I just ran my mouth and they filmed it. And then they had to come back again. And I ran my mouth. That but did they know that you could sing, Nancy? Did they know that you could sing? Not, not really. I mean, they knew I do comedy and improv and stuff, but I didn't, I didn't sing for them or anything. And then Before when you, I, I was you telling Jake, you, sang a part. you sang great. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Except that one time with that Baldwin brother, that wasn't so fun. Oh, oh yeah. Let's try to keep this show positive, Nancy. Positive. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Wait. Wait. Which there was brother? a Baldwin on our show. Which brother? Um, the one that's now sort of a religious right winger. I went to I went Amen. to camp with him. I, him did? I went to music camp well, with you him. You two have a lot in common. Nancy, we we same childhood. We got to talk about. I know. I know, right? When you auditioned, did they just say? They gave you a situation and you just yes ended it? No, no, it wasn't. It, I guess when I said improv, they just asked me questions. We just talked about stuff and I told them some of the stuff that I was doing. And yeah, it was like, it was, it was stuff. Listen, the week before my first audition for China Beach, I, had to, I got money from the Actors Fund to live because I couldn't pay my rent. So it was one of those serendipitous things, yeah. honest mm -hmm. to God. Wait, Yay. Oh, you hear that, that everybody? <laughs> Thank Nick, you, Actors Fund. Everybody watching, the Actors Fund is there yeah. when you need yeah. them. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's so wonderful. Oh, I, I got two months of uh, Actors Fund myself. Yeah. See? Yeah. Uh, you know. when, did, when did you go to them for help, Jeff? It was in the, I, I think it was just, it was like early 80s, mid 80s. Yeah. You know, it's because Susan Kletchy Watson, you know, who's on This Is Us. She said right before This Is Us, she really needed help and she went to the Actors yeah. Fund. It's interesting, mm -hmm. like so many, I know it, it isn't, we, you're actors, so that's why you're saying it helps. And we know that it helps everyone that's in the performing arts, but it is fascinating the number of people that we've talked to who right before they got something, they were down and out and they needed help. Yeah, yeah. And that's the Actors so Fund nice. was there for them. Oh my gosh, I did yeah. not expect that, that two of you would be saying that, wow. Yeah. Hey, now I have a question. Is the is is the Actors Fund connected to? Can you guys hear me? Just yeah. So, okay. Is it connected to the home where actors live? You know. Um, yes, in New Jersey. Or retired well, actors. It's, there's the one. There's the one that's in L.A. Right, and then there's yeah. one that's in Inglewood, New Jersey. So, oh my God! That's right. Oh. That's right. I heard right. about the one in Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, the I'm, fund covers a lot of stuff. It, it helps those, and it also helps with these grants because they're not loans; they're money that they give you outright. You know, yeah, that's right. you just have to show them bills or, or stuff like that. But yeah, it covers. It's the act. It's the actors' version. I mean, the theater actors' version of the motion picture fund for oh, okay. film actors because they do similar stuff. But it's for yeah. everybody though. But it's Actors Fund, you can go to them if you're a best boy, if you're a script supervisor, if you're an opera A wedding teacher, singer, whatever. Yeah, anything. And just wow. on a side note, what's been going on with a lot of actors, we're talking about actors, is they didn't have enough weeks in equity and they had jobs oh, right. that were going to give them equity weeks, get health insurance, and the jobs were canceled and now all these actors oh. are on health insurance. And it's oh, really a big, God. it's been a nightmare. Wow. So, that's so they're why, helping those actors who didn't quite make their weeks especially yeah. in shows, you know, they, they count equity, you know, it's like 12 weeks or 13 weeks, you get six months of health insurance, 20 weeks of work, you get a year. And some people didn't quite make it. And who knows when professional theater is gonna be around again. Oh my gosh. So they're helping with them as well. Oh yeah. Wow. So um, um, before we bring on Dr. LaPook, Dana, is there anything that uh, you want to talk about Bob and Nancy here before uh, we bring on LaPook? Any stories you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> I think the set should make Nancy sing that song. What song? Was it, was it Don't Make Me Over? Or oh don't... my God, that I was cleaning the uh You the were so good on that. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. You know what was funny about that day though, Dana? I think with there were only two big scenes that had to be done. And by the time they got to me, they, they were running out of light. And like it was at the end of the day and I was supposed to have this like dance rehearsal. So literally everything you saw on that was kind of like, Okay, uh, let me sort of do this thing, you know. <laughs> Whatever it was, yeah. It was. It was a lot of it was improv, and I recorded it first without the without the track. I had to go back later and sing the track to my picture. 
It was so crazy. <laughs> oh, you had to match your voice to what you had already acted out. Oh, that's fun though. That's yeah. Cool. It was it was tricky. It was, but that was that was fun. But more fun than that were not only the scenes that we got to do all together as a group, but when we had meals together. That I remember. I loved that mm-hmm. eating and oh, talking yeah. with everybody. You mean, well, yeah. there, was, there was a night and drinking. Out. <laughs> 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 There was a night out uh, because, as Dana had said earlier, and I, I remember this distinctly with Mark Helgenberger as well. Um, I mean, I think all of us were in this scene where we remember that stupid softball game that we had to shoot in the, in rain. the rain at three or four in the morning. <laughs> was uh, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't that literally a 24 hour day? Oh my Were God. Were we there that... actually for 24 hours? Almost 24 I know hours. That, I know uh, Mimi later directed that episode. That was the 4th of July episode. Yes, that's right. Yeah. How many and people I actually... Like, I can't hear how... Bob. Bob's talking. Oh. Um, I wanted to know, does everybody remember the first time they had to go up in a helicopter and get <gasps> and get filmed? Do you remember that the first it. time you were on I camera? I loved it too. That was it was, <laughs> but it, it wasn't it terrifying. Had you? I'd never been up in a helicopter no. before. And I we hadn't had to, either. It was. But we had scary. to look like it, we had to look like it was a day at the office, like we had done it all the time. And I distinctly remember. And I had it was a it was a musical show we did, and I had to sing in the helicopter. Oh. I've grown <laughs> I've grown accustomed to her face, so it was this like quiet emotive moment and inside my guts were coming <laughs> up <laughs> and exploding through my head. And I, I met, that was the most terrifying moment because it just went, it just shot straight up. Um, anyway, that was, that was the scariest moment that oh I recall. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to enjoy that. Um, Seth, do you want to play? You want to fulfill uh, Dana's wish here and put Nancy on the spot and sing? I kind of- Wow. No, no, oh, if you're going to do you remember that- uh, if you're going to do that, then let me sing the theme song to the show. I can imitate oh. Diana Ross. There you that. go. All right. Wow. All right. I, he I has think, that music. Yeah, this platform is very weird. So basically, I'm just going to give you the essence of piano playing because it's going to be off timing wise. So I'll give you the essence and you just go. So everyone else mute themselves Dana and Michael and Jeff and, and Bob. Uh, so that Nancy. Uh, oh, I was going to ask them to join in. Okay. No, it won't work. Yeah. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. All right. Okay. So right from uh, Through the Mirror. Yeah. Two, three, four. To the mirror of my mind, time after time, I see reflections of you and me, reflections of the way life used to be, reflections of the love you took from me. Oh, okay, that's it. <laughs> oh, but that's great. <laughs> I am so, I'm so, that's really You funny. are shameless. No. You're shameless. I know. No, oh, wow. I, while I've got you all here, I have to admit that I always prayed. I would go through the scripts and hope that they would have this like secret romance between me and Dodger, and it never happened. And when, I would go through the scripts and look for that and look for other stuff. And if I wasn't, if I wasn't in a dream sequence with Dodger or had something oh. seen, I would throw the script across the it, room. It should have happened. Stuff. It should have happened. We sang together at the very end, though. Remember? What did we, we sing? We sang um, When a Man Loves a Woman. We kind of oh, that's right. freaked it at oh each other. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, that wow. was my little tribute to you, Dodger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, Michael and Jeff, we're going to say goodbye to you as much as I hate for this to end. And we're going to bring Dr. LaPoo. Yeah, Michael, we want to have a good fight reunion with you. So we love the that. good fight. Yay. Oh, are I you on you that? All. I love you all. Yes, I, I love, love you all. Before you I let Michael you, go, I, you have to- I love you, I Cobra. To, I love you all. I did an interview. Nancy, I got a, love you, Dana. I've got a podcast love you, called The Child Files, and love Michael's you, the, la- the latest one. We interviewed him yeah, about was, the good fight, and there's some good trying to beat stories in there. So you guys there are. I, had, I did Nancy's podcast a few weeks ago. It was so much fun, and we talked about all of you. <laughs> yes, James and Seth, thank you so much. What a what a delight. Well, yes, thank you for Thanks helping for what you're doing. It's, we really, I, I really appreciate that. It's so great to know that you guys are doing that. So thanks, Michael. Anything thank we you. can do to help. Bye, bye, okay. Michael and Jeff. Bye, 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 bye. bye Michael. Bye, bye, Jeff. Love you. <laughs> bye, Michael. Love you. Uh, love you guys. All right. So I would say on that note, um, Dana, do you want to stay or do you want, because these two actually have a connection to uh, Dr. LaPook in different ways. I'll leave it to you. You want to take a break? Whatever you want. No, I'd love to be part of it. Stay on. So we're going to welcome 
not only our chief medical correspondent, but also one that happens to be for a network that Nancy works for, CBS, Dr. John LaPoo. Hi, guys. Hi, Nancy. Tom. Hi. Hey, John. Well, hi, Dr. Um, and, hi and hi, Dana. Um, hi. Hi, guys. I can confirm, Bob was just talking about him singing for an episode. I can confirm that he can sing because I know Bob for longer, I believe, than any of you for more than 40 years <laughs> because we were in the same singing group together in college. It was a singing group called the SOBs, the Society of Orpheus and Bacchus. And... Um, I hope I don't live to regret this, but um, <laughs> I've, I've, over the years, I've kept my private life and sort of the broadcast life uh, separate, but I am going to, for the very first time now, share some footage from my wedding oh, good. with my wife, Kate Lear, uh, which was um, May 26, 1985, so we're coming up on 35 years. Oh, my goodness. And um, the setup for it will just be that we got up there um, to do a song that we did in college, and a bunch of the same guys from the same group, a cappella, were there. Bob, uh, Bob and I. Well, you'll see Bob looking a little younger, uh, more like around China Beach time. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and then at the end, we used to do this little routine. You'll see. But then at the end, we're going to end on there's a there's a guy named um, Miles. Leverett Watson, Miles Watson, and he was a wonderful friend of ours, and he had a beautiful voice, and he used to sing a song called uh, called Chariot, and we were in the background there singing it. It was it is absolutely an evocative signature song, and you'll you'll hear one of the great voices. So I put it all together into a little clip. Uh, it's only two minutes, so uh, have fun with it. All right, Yay. here we go. As the New Haven train left Grand Central, a young girl got on with her kids. She said, I'm not grieving that it's come to leaving, cause this bug's about on the skids. The home is where the heart is. We can't hang our hearts on a nail. When the train had pulled out of the station, the family was still all inside. For Ann Harvard Feller had got her so miller that she was exquisitely fried. I serve my Lord to the judgment day. I hope I don't live to regret that. Guys, <laughs> this was so great. You guys completely retained your pitch a cappella. I'm so impressed. Well, I'll tell you a sweet song. So Miles, Miles Watson Leverett the third, who had one of the great voices, may he rest in peace. Aww. And two years ago, um, we or so or a few years ago, we had a, a, a memorial for him. And a 25, 30 members of, of the SOBs got together. And we sang um, Chariot, but like the the fallen military leader who the horse goes without the rider, we sang it, but with no solo. Um, oh, and wow. we just, we would go, we heard it in our heads then, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. And it was one of the sweetest moments oh, I can ever remember. So rest in peace, Miles. What Bob. Is it, Bob, what's it like to see that? 
Yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, in, to see Miles again, a, again, a glorious voice. I, I saw him many times because he lived in Los Angeles for a long time. So I got together with him uh, a number of times over the intervening years. A great guy. I saw him in um, on this island, once upon a time on this island. Once on a time, yeah. Once on this island. He was extraordinary. And to see that, you know, where we all look so young, it just occurs to me that uh, that you guys have all uh, aged so beautifully. You're a silver fox now, John. I'm, you know, it's uh, it's heartbreaking for me because uh, I see I still had a little hair back then. It's just a nostalgic moment. I still have the phantom hair pains. I don't know. So if that's, wait, if that's an actual <laughs> diagnostic. As I, long as we're going super personal, there's some things about Bob you may not know. Um, you going, oh, great. This is going to be fun for me. <laughs> so, so he has a rubber face, you know? And in college, I don't know if he can still do it. He could put his fist. Entire in fist in mouth. my mouth. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> not going to do it. You're going to have to pay good money to see that. Wait a minute. Dana, Dana and Nancy, did you know that? I never knew that. <laughs> no, but look at the no. size of my hands. They're huge, too. No, I have, you know what they say, ladies, big hands, big feet, big no, disappointment. I have, I have enormous <laughs> hands. And didn't you on tour, we would go on tour down south and, and play at various play colleges and stuff. And he, there was a, Crystal Burger, right? Which is this kind of a small hamburger. Oh, and you really, could, you're really, Dr. John is doing it all. <laughs> he, could, he, could, he could remember medically, it seems to be impossible. He could put like eight Crystal Burgers in his mouth. It's true. <laughs> Why you would want to do that? This was um, my early claim. Sadly, it's, I can't disengage that, whatever that was, it doesn't really work anymore. <laughs> but I, now that you've said that, I realize that, that, that the, the freak show option is still open for me. <laughs> so I'm going to think seriously about it. Well, Bob, 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 Bob I promise Dana, Dana, you and I will have a private lunch. <laughs> Same for you, Nancy. Well, I, will I, stick, I will stick my fist in my mouth <laughs> over the table job. at the you restaurant of your choice. Bob, right. Bob was, Bob was you pre -med. Place. Bob was pre med, and he became, of course, the holographic doctor on Star Trek. But he was pre med, and for two seconds, and he and I did a segment for CBS Evening News of things that came true in Star Trek. And we remember that we did that little segment. Together. I do. I remember it very well. And a lot of the, it, Star Trek has posited of. many technologies that have come true. So that was. Uh, and it was fun for us to be together. I've gotten the best tour of CBS News from wow. this fellow when I go when I go and visit. So we've been mm -hmm. friends literally forever. Wow. And by that he means figuratively forever. <laughs> figuratively forever. <laughs> and who do I call whenever I need an actual medical opinion? And this is, you know, when you play, I've put in 11 years as a television doctor, so I still get asked by people as if I know what I'm talking about right. for advice. And then I just call you and give them your advice. <laughs> well, I, I hope I don't live to regret that showing finally this super personal part of my, my life. Nobody's ever seen publicly that wedding video. And, and this Kate is Kate okay with this? Was she? Um... Yes, I. She does know that it happened. I got her permission. All right. And um, well, as I always do. <laughs> That's why we've been married almost thirty-five years. Yeah. He asked for us. respect. Well, I was on. Can I also say this at at their wedding? We yeah. had we not only sang. You know who we had to follow? The two thousand year old man. What? Mel Mel, Mel Brooks, Brooks and Carl Reiner did 10 minutes at their wedding before we went on. Wow. That was, if I, that was, I, I realized if I could do that, if we could go, you could go on after those guys, you can, you can survive and show yeah. wow. Okay, Dr. LaFouk, I have to ask, who are you that you got <laughs> Mel Brooks who are and you? Carl Reiner? Who are you? You know, back then for like 50 bucks, you could get them. Yeah. They hadn't been <laughs> a long time. They I, were family friends. We'll leave it oh at that. Oh my goodness. Uh, but I remember the piece, I remember the end of that because at the end, you know, they have to get off, They but they don't get off until they finally hit the great line. So Carl says, do you have any advice for the newlyweds? And Mel immediately goes, ignore each other. And Paul says, what do you mean? He says, ignore each other. Because the more you know each other, the more you'll realize you just like each other. And the same hatred you have for yourself, you'll throw on them. So Dr. LaPook, when you come home at night and, and Katie says, who is it? Say, it's Irving. Never give your real name in a marriage. Never. Once they know who you are, you're through. 
Uh, oh my god! What do you mean to live by? On that note, I think that's a good that's a good one to bring on our next guest because, as you keep saying, Doctor Lapook, there's science and then there's the beauty of laughter and music. And thank you for bringing both today. All right, thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. 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 John. And Bob, we're going to say goodbye to you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. It's wonderful that you guys are doing this thing. It was a joy to see my castmates. Uh, and uh, and I love you all. We love right. you, Bob. Thank you. No, sir. Uh, no. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> right, <Nancy. Are> <laughs> yeah. Get back to us. Okay. So, Dana, Brian, Brian's here. <laughs> so, let's, he, he made it. Let's yeah. Can you see? Brian? Ah! Uh, Hey, there you go. There you go. Brian Wimmer. Oh, look at you, cowboy. How are you? And we're going to bring two of your other co stars on. Marg. Hi, Marg. Hey. How's everybody and doing? And here we go. Oh, oh. 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 Hi, sweethearts. Hey there. I'm not Marg, though. Just so we're clear. Hey, Wim, I love that hair. Margie. Here, Marg. <laughs> Sada. Hi, sweethearts. Hi. Oh, boy, was it great to see all you guys. Yes. James and, yes. James and Seth, thank you so very much, really. Yes, thank and, you. Uh, for doing this. This is just a, a beautiful act of love, especially, you know, in the theater community and people who watch and um, those who served in Vietnam. And I couldn't be prouder or more honored to be with these wonderful actors, wonderful human beings. Bodhi, wherever you la are, kiss my goddaughter. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, oh. daughter is my goddaughter, Mackenzie. Wim, I love that. You know what? Speaking of that, one of the one of my favorite. There were a lot of favorite episodes, but one of them was when you there was integrated, if I remember correctly, with actual Vietnam vets, right? And yeah. I don't yeah. that had been on television before. I don't remember. I think that's one of the reasons it was so emotional to me is that I had fell in love with all of you. And then that it was already real. And then you brought in the real vets. In the real there. Girl, yeah. What, can, yeah. I, yeah. Go ahead. Talk I about think it. the reason that the, I, I, well, I was told and you guys can correct me if I <laughs> don't have this um, just right, but the, the uh, studio was asking for what they call a bottle episode because we were so far behind, apparently. And so, they, in other words, just shoot something like that could be shot very quickly in the studio. And, you know, so they came up with this idea um, to have real vets on and, and they would incorporate some of the scenes that we'd already shot. And, and they got that great cinematographer, Vilma Zygmunt, I think, right? Who shot it. So, um, and it ended up winning a Peabody Award, that episode. And um, wow. yeah, that was a really, that was and a spectacular these episode. The vets who had, these vets had already been our consultants on the show. So yeah. we knew a lot of them, but for me, the big moment was, I was in the elevator, we did it at a, what was it? The Beverly Garland Hotel, I think, in the Valley. <laughs> And I was going up the elevator and there was this woman in the elevator with me. And I turned and looked at her and she looked at me and we looked like twins. And it was this woman, Diane Evans, who was a nurse in Vietnam. And in the beginning of the show, she, she was very against the show because they were afraid that we were gonna, you know, not treat the nurses respectfully in their experience because nobody had really talked about the nurses in Vietnam before. Right. They had not talked about it. and. Um, we looked at each other and it was like my doppelganger. And that was just by accident that we looked alike. Wow. And then she, Diane went on to be a great supporter of the show and created the uh, Women's Memorial, the Vietnam Women's Memorial in Washington. Oh, that's right, yeah. So she yeah. was the one who insisted wow. that the women needed a memorial as well as the men. And she fought for that. And she, has her, she actually has her uh, memoir coming out this year. So people- oh. should, Diana. Very cool. Yeah, that is wonderful. So what does that mean to have consultants? Because you hear that and you see it on credits for TV shows. What did that mean for China Beach? Everything. Especially exactly. especially those. I mean, when Wimmer had his leg removed and, you know, uh, didn't have it. I mean, in war uh, episode. And Dana um, in the ER, myself in the ER. Jan Wyatt was one of our um, mm, Vietnam yeah. 
uh, service vets, uh, nurses, and it was imperative. I mean, how right. to do, how to hold any of those instruments, you know, and the machines and betadine and all of those things. They were, it was instrumental, really. They, they were amazing, all of them. Jen Wyatt, of course, was our, you know, um, for the girls. I don't know, was there anyone, Dana, for the guys? For, De for Picard? Oh, yes, you had, yes. Oh. Uh, Brian, tell them about the surfer guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, we we had a lot of guys that would come in and bring us their actual surfboards that they had in China Beach. They brought us some of the the, the actual T-shirts that they wore there. Um, yeah. We also had vets that showed me how to use a uh, wheelchair, what to do, what not to do. It just made it so much more authentic, and to work really closely with these guys, and 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 they gave everything, you know. And we tried to do our best, and I think we did a pretty good job of, of, of great job, you know, making great them job, feel Brian. like we're trying. We're, everybody was so afraid we were going to do a mash for Vietnam, and that right. it wasn't right. We, it wasn't time to do that yet. Right. Yeah. Well, well, Mark, did also, you, Mark, did you did you speak to any hookers, Mark? <laughs> Funny, you know, no one came forward. <laughs> to, say any, you know, to share any of their stories. But I remember how every before we started each season, you know, with all the vets in John Sacred Young's office on what Warner Brothers lot, we cram all, all the actors, producers, and quite a few of the vets into the room. So and we would it would just be like a week. It, it seemed like it was a weekend, but it probably was like two like full days. You guys probably remember better than me, but but it just was such an intense experience because they would share their stories, and it was we were all kind of in this, you know, in a foxhole almost together. It was yeah, it was it was such a, an amazing way to start each season because it really rooted everybody in like wow. you know the reality of what we were doing, and we just really felt compelled to you know honor their stories and what they went through. When yeah, we I remember we did we did that seminar yeah. before we did the pilot. And right. I remember sitting on the floor listening yeah. to yeah. all the people talking and feeling so intimidated and thinking, yeah. I have no, no right to play this part. I've never had any kind of experience as horrific as this in my life. Wow. And I felt like such a phony actor, you know? And I remember Bill Broyles, who was the co-creator of the show, and he had been in Vietnam as a Marine. And I, he, he came up to me later and he said, you know, you didn't ask any questions. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> and it's because I was like listening. And then by the time we did the, because uh, I don't really ask questions unless I know what to ask. Yeah. And then by the time we got to the second season, I had so many questions because there were things I still didn't understand, you know, but it was really intimidating at first because these were real yeah. people's lives. Right. Yeah. The right. Very humbling. The wonderful yeah. thing about going to all of these places to speak to nurses, when Dana couldn't go, they'd fly me out mm -hmm. and I'd go to Dallas and other places to receive awards for China Beach. And then we would, you know, I, I met women that served there, not only in the room and wow. the seminars, but, and men as well. We went to Arizona, everybody went out to Arizona uh, and met a lot of those veterans. And the one thing they, that stays with me forever, yeah. will forever stay with me, is um, one gentleman came up to me and said, you know, for years I haven't been able to look at the memories and the photographs and the letters and the notes. And I keep them in a shoebox in my attic. And as a result of your shows with the most accurate portrayal wow. of the stories of uh, in Vietnam, of the nurses, of the doctors, of those that were affected, both the Vietnamese and the Americans, he said, I was able to take that shoebox of memories down and wow. look at it after 25 years. Yeah. It, you know, if, if you can be lucky enough to be on a show like we all were to be on this show, I don't, you know, you can't really ask a lot more with that, especially in these challenging times. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the reasons why I think that, uh, like uh, a good Norman Lear show, 
but for you guys in the hour format and why it worked is that there was humor. Yes. And it, it wasn't all about death and okay. it wasn't all about the pain of being away from your families. It was real and funny. And of course, Morgan, Dana, it's like your, your scenes were highlights. Well, you know, all of you were, but I think we may have had, we have a little clip. Let me see. Just you ever see a person drown? All right, so you probably think the whole world lights up a cigarette after sex, too. I, Casey Kalowski, daughter of dark powers. <laughs> Silence! I, I don't believe this. This is the last time I allow myself to be talked into. <laughs> Little guy just didn't want to come. <laughs> Ciao. Okay, hold on. <laughs> 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 Little guy just didn't want to come. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there were always scenes like that that would make you go from like the most painful scenes, and then you'd see that stuff. I mean, it's great. That's I loved it. Real. But that's what war was like. They said, you know, and there was a lot of black humor there. That's the only way to survive. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, we had so some wonderful writers on that show, really terrific writers. And, you know, besides John Young and, and Bill Broyles and Carol Flint and Lydia Woodward and Woodward, yeah. Mimi Peter, yeah. who directed so many of our episodes. It was just a, and the, the crew, you know, all the production heads, wow. it was wonderful. Yeah. Family. Well, great family. talent. Huge family. Huge family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we always pick up wherever we leave off, how many years that is. I mean, it, it, it's a, a rare gift. And I, think I know, yeah. Wonderful feeling, you know, and I think actors have that kind of sense of, oh, you know, um, camaraderie. We, we're, we're all connected with that kind of spirit, the spirit of giving and receiving and embracing, you know, um, our audiences and those that, you know, we can't see but hopefully we're touching and we're feeling somewhere, uh, you know, in the universe, and especially, especially now. Mm -hmm. I, I just have to say, I have Dana, I have many, many gifts that we had, but I have the shot glass Dana gave us at the very closing, you know, um, party. And I, of course, I fortunately, you know, I don't have it. Lila always had it filled as to Dana and Mark, but um, this is just you know, water. But I just had to show a little kind of Oh, water. those were the days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Off the steps. We love that. We got the glass. <laughs> I hey, love Dana. That. Mm. Seth, I think, sent you some more donations. Oh. Do you mind reading well, there, more? There come some pretty amazing places you'll see as oh, you go cool. on. Oh, cool. Yay. Great. You can round them up, Dana. Okay. <laughs> are, you, are you dead? Okay. <laughs> I'm getting them. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Look at this nice okay. comment. I love that the go. actors loved it as much as we loved watching it. That's not always the case. Oh. Very sweet. Oops. You ready? Yes, yes, we're ready, Dana. Okay. We're ready. Melissa it. from Maryland, 25. Laura from North Carolina gave 103. Charlie from Brooklyn, 50. Adina, Connecticut, $25. Saw every episode and bought the DVD set for her husband, who loves it. Yay. Oh, oh. Nicola from Liverpool, UK, 25. I know Nicola. Renata from yeah. Germany, 10. Oh, Diana from Ireland. Thank you, Diana, 51. And Julia from Moscow, Russia, 51. Thank you, Julia. These are all wow. like Twitter people I know. Oh, <laughs> That's great. Thank yeah. you. It's amazing. They're watching all over the world. Oh. That's great. Thank you. Oh, uh, that's nice. And a lot yeah. of them are a lot of them are really young. Like they didn't watch the show like when it originally came out, and yeah. so it's it's kind of amazing that you know you can have twenty five year olds that are watching the show because they what? just uh, you know what that makes me think, it. Mark, what Like for all of you, the Vietnam War, of course, wasn't just Americans. So like, did did people watch it around the world? Like when you went and you traveled mm -hmm. while the show was on, like what was your what was the fan interaction? Australia and Germany were very big. What about you guys? But didn't we the Netherlands also? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Things weren't yeah. things weren't played yeah. everywhere as much then. Got it. Yeah. You want to bring yeah, on the um, special guest? Yeah, yeah. we have a, we have a special guest. German. Oh. What'd you say? 
I had people coming up to me speaking German, thinking I spoke fluent German because they apparently they had <laughs> replaced our dialogue in the Netherlands, and and they were carrying on for quite some time, and I just such a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> we never win. Not a smile. Win. Not a smile. That's funny. We have someone else who was on your show that wants to say hello to you. Please say hello to Miss Ricky Lake. Yes. Hi, Hi everybody. Hi. Hey. Oh. It's so fun to watch you guys. It's oh. uh, what a nice surprise. I didn't know you were going to be a surprise. It was one of my, the, the oh, for me was working on this show with you guys for that one season. I learned so much from all of you and uh it was, I can't believe how long ago it was. I, I turned 20, you guys came to my 21st oh, birthday party. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I had a, a karaoke party. I think I have like yeah. blackmail material of you guys somewhere. I remember I'm singing sure. Stop in the Name of Love. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Karaoke, oh yeah. Uh, 21. Wow. And I'm now 51. Yeah, you all look so well. <laughs> Ricky, I love your short hair. Oh. I love your hair, Ricky. Yeah. It really suits really, you. Thank you. It was a good move before this quarantine thing because I'd be I would have been doing it under like major duress right now. <laughs> so <it was laughs> my control. But you guys were talking about the helicopters. I remember I was a donut dolly, so I actually had to ride in that helicopter without the doors, and they would do those turn. I mean, it was crazy the stuff that yeah. they were doing. Like, yeah, I, I never had to see the helicopter with wing powder. Where, because he we we had a thing the show right and like yeah, hanging out, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. We we kind of just did this stuff and not even think about. Oh no, we're just on these like That's old right. Hueys and. You I know. loved I loved those helicopters. I mean, only I was only on it once, but Mark, I remember I couldn't get over the fact that you named your beautiful son, and then I did know that of course it was your dad's name, and then I really felt embarrassed having said, "Why did you name your son after a helicopter?" And it was really. <laughs> And she has this gorgeous son, and his name is Hugh. And we would call it Hell. He's 29 he now. No. Oh, oh my God. God. Say that. And married. Mark. Oh, no. Really? Married. Married. Oh, my yeah. God. Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. And life goes yeah. on. Marches on. Yeah. Can I say how great it is to see Ricky Lake? I remember your 21st birthday very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to find pictures. I'm going to post them on Instagram. You I was all going to drink, you know? so I had a cocktail. We all toasted you. We sang. It was great. Your parents were there. It was terrific. It's only yeah. 30, 31 years ago. 30 years ago, because I'm 51. So 30 years ago. You're oh, a baby. No. You're a baby. Yeah. A baby is right. Absolutely. Oh, my God. You guys. Yeah. It's really fun to see you all. I'm going to go rewatch the show. I have that DVD set. I want to break it out and get nostalgic. It was, it was the best. It was it's the damn good yeah. show. It still is the best. Mm -hmm. And Ricky, you did one of the most important episodes. Which is which one? Oh, the one that, that they right. They, they, the one that was, was told backwards. Oh, yeah. that was right. my, my character has an abortion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Was and then ABC yeah. would Holy never joy. air it again. So it only aired that one yes. time. Wow. That one time. Oh. Yeah. It was, I mean, I have to, I, I don't think of myself really as an actress. I mean, I did a lot of acting, but I, I, I don't think I was a very good actress, but I think I did some of my best, best work on, on. You were great. You were, it was yeah, hard. You were great. I'm a better talk show host. Well, <laughs> well, that dance with Wimmer, that dance with Wimmer. Um, oh, and, and, uh, and Robert, you were talking, I think Boatman was talking about us in oh. the rain, that, that softball game at like four in the morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was freezing. I oh my gosh! And yet it was still. I would do it again tomorrow. You know, yeah, that's right. Those eighteen-hour day. I worked that twenty-four-hour day, Bobby. I worked I, with you. I did too. There I was remember. More than one, though. We were. Yeah, there was more than one. Consetta and I have. Consetta and I have a special relationship as the two Italians on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ones who ate most. No, but remember at two in the morning, Bobby, when we had Barbara Babcock on the gurney, right? I mean, she was dying of something, some heart thing. Oh, yeah, she had a heart problem. Okay. And so it, it was two in the morning. I mean, we had gotten there. We had drove into Indian Dunes, which was the pit location of the world. But it was perfect for China Beach at, you know, early, early morning. And then there she is lying. And it's three in the morning. And so... Picardo and I just looked at each other. I cannot tell you how many takes that took 
to, you know, hit that baby home because he looked at me, I looked at him and we looked at Barbara and then we just burst out laughing. It was the wrong time to do any of those things, but I'll never forget that as long as we remember, Bobby, I'm not just remembering. No, and I remember an evening in the, uh, you know, in, the in the bar set where Dana <laughs> was in cut off shorts and it was probably, I, I don't know, it was maybe 38 or 40 degrees. She's in a t-shirt uh, right. where they've sprayed down her armpits oh. to look like she's sweating and her legs were beet red and yeah. virtually, you know, frostbitten. Yeah. And Sucking ice cubes. It was just yeah. ridiculous. It, you know, yeah. it was the it was the coldest Vietnam ever. <laughs> no, but Mark, Mark had the worst of it. Mark, Mark yeah, had Mark the worst did. of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mark had the worst with her little skimpy outfits. I did. I was always wearing yeah something yeah small. Whatever, and beautiful tight. to look at. You know, well, you said these great photos. That, uh, it's what's, true. what's that? You said these great oh, photos. Oh, I, I did. Yes, that's right. That was, and that's um. Oh, Megan. Uh, Megan's not in that. Megan, Megan Gallagher. Gallagher. Yeah. Yeah, Megan. And this, uh, is, a, this Megan. is a this young um, uh, actress who, who um, playing this character, the little girl that's on the gurney, was just so moving. Oh, there she, she was so oh, adorable and terrific. Uh, Sweet. You know. A lot of wonderful child actors mm -hmm. on that show. Mm -hmm. you? Just had this yes. Photo. Um, J Joseph Gordon Levitt oh. played Jeff's son. Really? Oh yeah, that's right. And when in the uh, future episode, yeah. these episodes that went into the eighties. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, jo Joseph Gordon-Levitt played Jeff's son, and he was seven years old at the time. Oh my god! And he was supposed to be Eurasian, and even though he's not really, but he kind of looked like he was. But they hired him because he was such a good actor at seven that I remember saying, "Who are you?" Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, he was phenomenal at seven yeah, years old. So it's not surprising. Oh wow. Wow. And our this? directors loved kid oh. actors. You know, there's a lot of directors out there that, you know, you know, WC Fields, you know, when it came uh -huh. to children. And, uh, but it was, it, you know, the, our directors loved being with those kids. And oh. those kids listened and they were really, you know, well behaved, I thought. I mean, especially the hours that they came in. And um, because it was union and we had to observe those hours with those kids. But I mean, it was astonishing how they were just always up and ready to go. As long as that, you know, that craft service, those donuts were there, hot chili or something. They were always ready to go and really talented, talented kids. The wow. best child actor we had was the one who played Mark's daughter in the, when the embassy is oh, falling in Saigon. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. on the Shay. helicopter. Shay, oh, that, my yeah, God, that's, that's the best Shay. acting I've ever seen in my life by Ms. Mark Hilligenberger. Oh, Dana. <laughs> no, seriously, that's really. really. That's really sweet of you. Thank you. Well, really great. Actually, it was, there, was, there was sort of no acting required. Uh, just a little behind the scenes was going on. I had, I just had my son, Hugh, um, I don't know, a month. I went back to work after a month. I wasn't quite ready to get back into those 18 hour days, you know? Hmm. Uh, ease into it. So anyway, it was a scene in which I was having to let get my daughter on the last helicopter out of Saigon or one of the last helicopters out of Saigon, my daughter on the show. And I had, I was arrived to the set late. I had gotten lost. We were shooting downtown LA and I was just, I was hormonal, like just like sobbing and nonstop the entire day, which was required for the scene. So I can't really <laughs> attribute it to any kind of technique <laughs> or camping <laughs> skills. It was just, uh, it's funny. I, I just did a play with the woman who had just had a baby, and she has she plays somebody who just had a baby. And I told her about you in that scene, and I said, oh. "You are going to have the easiest job in this play ever." <laughs> <laughs> and she and she did nail it. Every she night. was fantastic. <laughs> Oh, uh, I so do not want this to end, but I think we have to have it come to an end. But there's we want to show one little clip, and I'm going to bring on Nancy, Ricky. We want you back and we have an idea for you to join us for future shows. Uh, whenever. I love what you guys are doing. Thank you so much for doing this for the acting community and all the people that work behind the scenes. It's great to see you all. Thank you. Ricky. Love you. Bye, Ricky. Bye, Ricky. Bye, Ricky. 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 Thank you, Ricky. We're going to bring on Bob. We're going to say goodbye to you. All right. Thank, thank you, so you again. Bye, Bye Bob. Bye, Bye, Bobby. Bobby. We're gonna bring on Wimmer since he uh, he missed out. If he can come on here, I saw his face. So there he is. Yes. And we're gonna bring on Nancy because I think I think this Nancy is from the last episode, if I remember correctly. And it's just a little clip. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful. Is it? Are you singing? Is that in the last episode? 
Oh, we put it, you're on mute. At the wall? At the wall? Are we, are we talking about? I think, yeah. Uh oh. Hi. Yeah, there you go. Hey. Think, yeah, I think there was this beautiful montage that they did of all, uh, lots of scenes from the show. And I, if it's America the Beautiful, I think that's me singing. Yeah, I don't, let me see. It's it, We're just, okay. it's just a little clip. And because otherwise we get flagged by YouTube and all that, and basically no one's at YouTube right now, so we don't want that. So we're just a little sample um, of it. Above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed His rays on thee. Oh my god. That's that's my favorite line in the last episode that's where it's a voiceover and I say I couldn't save all of them, but I oh it kills me. But I say but I saved some. Some. That's right. Oh, it kills me that line. Yeah. And Nancy, oh. that was so beautifully done, Nancy. I forgot that. Thanks yeah. for remembering it to play it love again. That. Love for that. all of us. Yeah. Wow. Well, love it, love it. Thank you, Dana, and thank oh, you, thank for you guys, Seth, James, yeah. Seth. Thank you for for putting up with your husband's obsession. Oh no, I'm obsessed. I can't wait to watch. He just, he just, he just whispered to me, "We got to get the DVD." Thank you for organizing this. This is a really no, great. No, yeah. I knew yeah, you guys would love it. it. For a really yeah, great well, we did. Thank, thank, you. thank you. All the people out there who tuned in, everybody. everybody. What's that, Mark? Yes. I just want to thank you guys, James and Seth, for, for you Everyone know doing what you're done? doing, and to, to everybody tell. who is tuned in and donated money. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. yes from all and over the world. Thank you, thank you, thank Let's you. All live in the light here, okay? Spread the light. Yeah. God Next bless up, A reboot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see you. Bye. 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 Bye.